What if I told you one of Africa's poorest countries is building an $800 billion project that could give electricity to a whole continent? Sounds crazy, right? Not anymore. Welcome to West Africa. There's a place called Burkina Faso. It's a small country that doesn't touch the ocean, and for a long time, nobody really paid attention to it. For many years, the people there were poor, didn't have much stuff, and had to struggle every day just to get basic things like electricity and clean water. In the villages far from cities, when the sun went down, everything went completely dark. Houses had no lights. Schools had no power. Hospitals couldn't use the machines that saved people's lives. This was what millions of people lived with every single day. But today, Burkina Faso is changing its future with a huge $800 billion water power project that could change not just their country, but all of Africa. This big plan is being led by Captain Ibrahim Traoré, a smart leader who really wants to change how Africa depends on other countries. His goal isn't just about making electricity, it's about being independent, making things better, and showing the whole area how to move forward. At $800 billion, this is one of the biggest building projects in the history of the world. And guess what? It's coming from a country that people used to say was too poor, too small, and had too many problems. Captain Traoré's plan? Build 11 huge dams along the Mohun River, all connected by a super smart electric system. The goal? Bring clean, steady electricity to 15 countries in West Africa. This isn't just about turning on lights in houses. It's about giving power to schools, hospitals, factories, and farms. It's about creating millions of jobs and giving every African person the tools they need to do well. Right now, workers are putting down cables, pouring concrete, and putting in turbines. The dream is becoming real, and Burkina Faso is becoming the leader of a new Africa. This project is more than just power. It's a powerful message. For too long, African countries were seen as needy, their resources were taken away, and other people decided their futures. Traoré is changing that story. By working with growing countries like Cuba, Iran, and Brazil, instead of depending on the usual Western countries, he's proving that Africa can pick its own friends, build its own future, and stand on its own. As the dams get built and the lights turn on, Burkina Faso is proving something powerful. Being great isn't just for rich or strong countries. It belongs to people who dare to dream and then do something about it. To really understand how important this moment is, we need to know where Burkina Faso came from. It used to be called Upper Volta, and it became free from France in 1960. But like many countries that got free from being colonies, freedom didn't mean they became rich. The land is tough, mostly desert and grassland, and rain doesn't come when you need it. Farming, which is how most people make money, has always been hard. And without much water and weird weather, not having enough food became normal. Electricity was something only rich people had. Only the biggest cities, like Ouagadougou and Bobo Diolasso, had it, and even there, the power went out a lot. In the countryside, whole communities lived in darkness. Families had to use candles, oil lamps, or wood fires, which cost a lot of money were dangerous and bad for people's health and the environment. Kids couldn't study at night. Women had to cook over smoky fires. Trees were cut down faster than they could grow back. In faraway clinics, doctors often had to work by candlelight. Important machines just sat there because there was no power. Imagine losing someone you love, not because the medicine didn't exist, but because there was no electricity to run the machines. These weren't just small problems. They were chains that held back a whole country. Without power, there was no progress, no modern hospitals, no factories, no way to compete with the rest of the world. Making things worse was that the government kept changing. For many years, there were takeovers and different leaders kept coming and going, which made it hard to plan for the future. While help from other countries kept Burkina Faso going, it often came with conditions. Aid deals sometimes forced the country to buy fuel or technology from the countries giving help, which made them depend on others even more instead of helping them grow. Burkina Faso stayed stuck in a circle waiting for help instead of building power from inside. Then in 2022, everything changed. Captain Ibrahim Traoré came to power after a military takeover, promising a new direction. The people really wanted bold leadership, and he gave it to them. Traoré saw electricity not just as buildings and wires, 
but his freedom. His vision, an Africa powered by its own people, using its own rivers, led by its own leaders. From that vision, the $800 billion water power project was born. A project not just for Burkina Faso, but for a whole area. A project that would break the chains of the past and start a future where every person could do well. Captain Ibrahim Traoré isn't like other leaders. He's young, brave, and really loves his country. He came to power with one powerful vision, to make Burkina Faso strong, able to take care of itself, and successful. While previous governments leaned heavily on help from other countries, Traoré chose a different path. He looked inside his own country, at the land, the rivers, and the people, and saw power that nobody was using. One river really stood out, the Mohun. Throughout history, rivers have been the engines that made civilizations work. From old water mills to today's water power dams, flowing water has powered progress. Traoré believed the Mohan River could do the same, on a scale nobody had ever imagined. His plan, build a huge network of 11 water power dams across the Mohan River, all connected to a smart electric system that covers the continent. The goal? Bring clean, lasting power to 15 countries in West Africa. This wasn't about one or two dams. It was a connected system. The water's force would spin huge turbines, making electricity that would flow through thousands of miles of cables, lighting up cities, villages, schools, and factories. And at the heart of it all, a smart electric grid, designed to send power exactly where it's needed, with no waste and no blackouts. It's a big step forward in building things, and in vision. When people found out it would cost $800 billion, the world reacted with doubt. Critics said it was unrealistic. Too big for a country that didn't have much money. Some people even made fun of the plan. But Captain Traoré didn't back down. He saw beyond the doubts. To him, this wasn't a risky bet. It was an investment in a future where electricity is something everyone should have, not just lucky people. A future where Burkina Faso no longer begs, but builds. Refusing to be tied to the same Western countries that once took advantage of Africa, Traoré made new partnerships. Engineers, architects, and technicians came from countries like Cuba, Iran, and Brazil. Not as saviors, but as partners. These friendships sent a clear message. Africa can choose its friends, decide its future, and build power, both real electricity and political power, on its own terms. At the heart of this change are the 11 Mahon River Dams, amazing examples of modern engineering. They're huge concrete giants built from thousands of tons of steel and stone, rising in one of the toughest areas in West Africa. The land here is unforgiving, rocky, dry, and far from everything. Crews have to blast through stone, make uneven ground flat, and pour foundations that can hold back millions of gallons of rushing water. Every dam is a fight against nature, and a victory over limitation. These dams aren't just impressive, they're built to last. They're designed to handle floods, droughts, and the worst conditions, and they're made to keep producing clean energy for many years to come. Each of the 11 dams is carefully placed along the Mohan River to create a powerful chain reaction. Water flows from one dam to the next, spinning turbines at every stop to make as much energy as possible. These turbines work like huge fans, powered by the river's current to make electricity. Each dam also has spillways and gates, allowing exact control of water flow, storing it during dry seasons and preventing floods during the rainy ones. Because of this design, the system works all year, even in Burkina Faso's unpredictable weather. It's energy that you can count on, built from the ground up. Building this huge system is not easy. Thousands of workers, heavy machines, and cutting-edge technology are all working together. Bulldozers clear land, cranes lift steel, concrete gets poured by the ton, and it's not just about machines. Local workers are being taught how to install turbines, maintain the grid, and operate dams. A new skilled workforce is growing, proud to build their country's future. These dams represent more than just buildings and infrastructure. They show what Burkina Faso can achieve when everyone works together for the same purpose and is powered by possibility. If the dams are the backbone, the smart electric grid is the brain, 
It's an intelligent web of power lines stretching across West Africa, from landlocked countries like Niger and Mali to coastal areas like Nigeria and Senegal. This isn't just a bunch of tangled wires. It's a high-tech system powered by artificial intelligence. The AI watches energy use in real time, adjusting power distribution with incredible accuracy. If factories in Ghana start making more things, the grid responds, sending more power. If a village in Togo needs light for students to study at night, it delivers. No delays, no waste, just smart, responsive energy. And to top it off, solar panels work as backups, keeping the system running even if one part breaks down. It's stable, can grow bigger, and is secure. Compared to the unreliable grids of the past, this system is revolutionary. No more blackouts that last for hours or days. It's a new beginning for energy in West Africa. Families in rural areas will have light in their homes for the very first time. Children will study at night. Hospitals will run essential equipment without noisy, expensive generators. From small shops accepting mobile payments to factories making goods for markets around the world, this grid powers growth, innovation, and independence. Imagine this. A market trader in Senegal now uses her smartphone to sell things online without being afraid of losing power. A farmer in Mali can run irrigation pumps through the dry season, growing food even when the rain doesn't come. This grid is turning electricity from something rare and expensive into a basic right, giving power to millions with the tools they need to do well. And while the full system will be finished by 2030, the change has already started. In some villages, lights are turning on for the very first time. People are celebrating. Shops are getting bigger. Families are dreaming bigger. Across West Africa, the grid is replacing not having enough with having possibilities. One of the most powerful effects of this $800 billion project is jobs. Over 1.5 million people in Burkina Faso are already working on it, and the number keeps growing. From pouring concrete and welding to designing turbines and programming smart grids, this project is building a workforce for the future. For many, it's the first time they have had steady income, purpose, and pride in shaping their nation's future. Captain Traoré made a bold decision. Instead of hiring everything out to foreign companies, he invested in his own people. Burkina Faso's citizens are learning trades, managing systems, and taking ownership of their country's transformation. A young woman who once sold fruit on the roadside now operates a crane at a dam site. A man who moved to Europe looking for work comes back home to write AI code for the smart grid. These aren't just success stories. They're signs of a national awakening. The movement is getting attention worldwide. Over 40 green tech companies have already set up operations near the dams, working on solar panels, wind turbines, and next-generation clean energy innovations. Some people are calling it the Silicon Valley of African energy, a hub of innovation, talent, and future-focused development. These companies are hiring locally, making the job boom bigger, and putting Burkina Faso on the map as a clean energy leader. And the impact goes beyond technology. The dams are powering advanced irrigation systems, allowing farmers to plant and harvest all year round. In a land once hurt by drought and hunger, this is nothing short of revolutionary. With electricity powering water pumps, farmers across Burkina Faso are growing valuable crops like mangoes, tomatoes, and rice. Not just for local markets, but to sell to places like Dubai and Europe. What used to be just growing food to survive is becoming a profitable business. Families are earning new income, and Burkina Faso is stepping onto the world stage as an agricultural powerhouse. This $800 billion project isn't just about dams and wires. It's about creating a whole new economy and rewriting the future for millions. Every dam built, every turbine installed, and every power line laid is a new opportunity. It's fueling an economic revolution that's lifting entire communities. As more people get steady jobs, they're spending more, supporting shops, markets, restaurants, and services. New businesses are starting, from small startups to large-scale factories. With modern irrigation systems powered by the dams, farming is no longer at the mercy of seasonal rain. Now farmers can grow crops year-round, reliably feeding their families and making a profit. A tomato farmer in Burkina Faso's Sahel region might now ship crates of produce to busy markets in Nigeria or Ghana. 
something unimaginable just years ago. This extra income allows families to build better homes, send their children to school, and invest in their communities. And as agricultural exports grow, foreign money flows in, funding the construction of new schools, roads, and hospitals. The benefits don't stop at Burkina Faso's borders. The smart grid connecting 15 West African countries is sparking growth across the region. Factories in Ghana now run without fear of blackouts, producing goods to sell to other countries. In Nigeria, markets are thriving with traders using mobile apps powered by a stable electric grid. In Mali, schools are finally getting access to computers and the internet, giving students the tools to compete in a global economy and shape the future of their countries. This is the power of connection. One country's rise becomes a regional awakening, lifting neighbors and creating a new standard for what's possible. And the world is taking notice. Investors from across the globe are setting their sights on West Africa's energy revolution, opening offices, hiring local talent, and introducing advanced technologies. Imagine a tech company opening a solar panel factory near the dams, creating hundreds of jobs and feeding innovation directly into the grid. This is no longer a dream, it's the new reality. Now even shipping companies are investing, buying fleets of trucks to transport crops from Burkina Faso to coastal ports. The ripple effect is undeniable. This isn't just a national project, it's a regional transformation. The $800 billion project is turning West Africa into a rising hub of innovation, growth, and prosperity. When Captain Ibrahim Traoré first announced the project, many people in the West laughed. How could a small, landlocked country with limited resources dare to lead such a huge undertaking? But now, as dams rise and the smart grid expands, the world is taking notice. Some nations are watching in amazement. Others, with growing worry. China is investing in satellite energy labs. Russia is sending engineers. India is negotiating access to the grid to power its own expanding economy. Burkina Faso is no longer seen as a charity case. It's a strategic partner in the global energy game. And suddenly, Western countries that once overlooked Burkina Faso are scrambling to join in. They realize the future of African energy is being built without them. With the world moving away from fossil fuels, Europe is eyeing Burkina Faso's clean, renewable power. One proposed $20 billion extension could carry electricity under the Sahara to North Africa, and even into Europe itself. Yes, Burkina Faso, once dismissed as poor and unimportant, is emerging as a major player in the global energy economy, and the world didn't see it coming. But this isn't just about economics, it's about history. For centuries, Africa's resources were stolen. The people were left with little. Traoré's vision is about ending that legacy, permanently. Every bit of electricity generated by these dams is a declaration of independence. Every deal made with emerging economies is a step away from the old system, where Africa was exploited instead of empowered. Today, Burkina Faso chooses its partners, sets its own terms, decides its own future. This is no longer a continent waiting to be saved. It's one rising to lead. What we're witnessing is a geopolitical earthquake, one that's redefining how Africa is seen, respected, and engaged with on the world stage. Captain Ibrahim Traoré's $800 billion project isn't just about building dams or electric grids. It's about building dignity, sovereignty, and a future Africa owns completely. As the turbines spin and the lights come on, one thing is clear. Africa's future is bright, and it's being built by Africans, for Africans. If this story inspires you, like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay tuned.